Thank you for joining us tonight. We begin again with tragedy in Nova Scotia. The number of dead continues to rise. We're finding out more about what happened during that weekend shooting spree that is now the ma worst mass killing in modern history of this province and of our country. 23 people are dead at 16 different crime scenes. That includes the gunman who terrorized this province for more than 12 hours. Alexa McLean has been poring over the details just released by the RCMP and joins us now live from our newsroom with more. Alexa. Well, thank you, Sarah. Now the news that there are more than 20 victims of this crime has come as a shock to all Nova Scotians. And unlike the, la the last two days, the RCMP didn't speak with media today. Instead, they issued a release late this afternoon filled with details. Police have released the first details of a timeline that describes how this entire incident evolved. Police say they were called to a report of a shooting inside a port pic home around 10.30 p.m. on April 18th. When they arrived, they found several bodies inside and outside of the home. Police evacuated residents from the immediate area while searching for a suspect. That search lasted through the night and into the morning of April 19th. By then, police were warning the public about a gunman who was armed and dangerous and driving what looked like an RCMP cruiser. The search ended after police shot and killed the suspect at a gas station in Enfield. His killing has been referred to the Serious Incident Response Team for investigation. Police say some of the victims were known to the shooter and some weren't. RCMP aren't providing any further information on possible relationships. Police say this is an unprecedented incident and they are mindful of the families who are still waiting to learn whether or not their loved ones were involved. Victims were found in several communities beyond port pic including Wentworth, DeBert, Shubenacadie, Milford and Enfield. Police also found several burned structures and vehicles. RCMP say this investigation is detailed and complex and they will not speculate on a motive. And Sarah, Premier Stephen McNeil has confirmed that the military will be providing assistance to the RCMP in their investigation. And this assistance ranges from providing equipment such as lights to help protect and process all of these crime scenes. Sarah. Okay, thanks Alexa. That is Alexa McLean live for us tonight in our Halifax studios. In the communities most affected by this tragedy, there are feelings of shock and horror but there are also questions about why they were not warned earlier about a rampage that unfolded over more than 13 hours. Ross Lord has that story. Tributes to those killed are growing and for some Nova Scotians, so are questions about whether the public had enough information. This country road is popular for walking. Now it's an example of randomness. David and Heather Matthews decided Sunday morning to alter their normal path. So I come out of the driveway and I said, no, I'm not walking down the road. And I don't know why. Minutes later, they heard the sound of what they now believe was a gunshot that took the life of Lillian Hislop, who was also a regular walker. Heather Matthews feels if RCMP had initiated a widespread warning, the outcome could have been different. We get COVID-19 alerts. We get uh, Amber alerts. Why could we not have received perhaps after the process of this beginning at 11.30 the night before, uh, some kind of an alert to warn us that there was someone loose and that perhaps if that occurred on our devices, televisions, radios, te telephones, perhaps Lillian would still be living. Along with hard questions come widespread tributes, including a makeshift shrine at DeBert Elementary School. Lisa McCulley taught here, along with being a dedicated mother of two. Nobody in their right mind would want to kill her or anybody. People in these hardest hit communities also crave a day that doesn't reveal even worse information about what happened. Ross Lohr, Global News, Port of Pick, Nova Scotia. That question of why an emergency alert was never sent out is going to be a central one as this investigation unfolds. We now know that the provincial government was notified of this situation at around midnight on Saturday, told there were structure fires that couldn't be put out and may spread. Here's the Premier with more. Uh, we were then asked for some 
uh, later in the morning air support uh, to, uh, to go uh, provide air support uh, in the air. Uh, our EMO uh, center was activated, has been activated. Uh, we brought in uh, staff that had come in, those that especially deal with the alert system. Uh, and we, yes, we need to be uh, the lead agency, in this case the RCMP has to ask uh, for that alert to go out because quite frankly we need the information from them. What, what is it that they want in that uh, uh, alert to notify to citizens? Uh, they had, but we had staff on hand in the morning to be able to do that and, and uh, but it was not requested. As the death toll continues to rise, more tributes are pouring in for the victims of this horrific crime. They're being remembered for the lives they lived by the people they loved. Here's Elizabeth McSheffrey with more. I know. Grade 3 and 4 teacher Lisa McCulley is remembered by Principal Scott Armstrong as a warm, whimsical educator with a love for the arts. She brought so much life and colour to everything she did. She loved music, she loved art, and uh, she was a consummate teacher. And a dedicated single mother who showed her students and community the same love she did her own children. Not only did she support the students in her classroom and, and other teachers, she actually developed lessons and activities for families in, in, in Port Pic and that community who she was involved with in her church community. RCMP say McCulley is one of 23 dead after a mass shooting in Nova Scotia over the weekend. 17-year-old old Emily Tuck was the youngest. Their lives are being celebrated now by family and friends. We were members of her, her family. Spatsy Dublin says former long-term care worker Don Madsen was a nurturing and kind employee at the Hillsdale Terraces home in Oshawa, Ontario. But the union rep was a straight shooter. Uh, negative or positive, it didn't matter. She was honest, totally honest. There are times that I didn't want her to be that honest. And loved by staff and residents for it. She and husband Frank Gulichin had less than a year together in Nova Scotia after spending several years apart while Frank fixed up their rural home here and Dawn awaited retirement. The one thing that I think gave me some satisfaction is that she was there with her husband and had that time. Her and Frank had that time together to bond again. Halifax area councillor Steve meantime, Stretch shares his own fond memories of neighbour and constituent Joey Weber. The married father of two was killed while running an errand for his family. And this is such a tragic loss and he will be missed uh, uh, by many, many people. Weber worked in forestry and was fondly known for the two draft horses he used to haul wood by his Muscadabit Valley home. It was always something very unique uh, to see in our small community. Tributes to these victims and those who have not yet been identified are popping up across Nova Scotia, Canada and the world. If you have a Nova Scotia tartan wherever you are, now's the time to wear it. Elizabeth McSheffrey, Global News, Halifax. A mass killing like this leaves long-lasting scars for many people, including first responders. There are services in place to support police officers and to help them cope. Callum Smith reports tonight from Moncton, a city that knows this trauma all too well. The tragic deaths in Nova Scotia over the weekend equate to one of the deadliest rampages this country has ever witnessed. And the psychological impacts can be felt for months, if not years, says this recently retired RCMP officer. Louis Philip Terrio knows the toll trauma can take, losing five colleagues on the job prior to leaving the force in late 2019 to pursue law school. He says knowing an officer died in the line of duty in the Nova Scotia tragedy and the scope of the crime can impact people differently. There's some firefighters, there's some paramedics, there's some uh, police officers that went to those calls and that won't be affected at all. That they're going to be affected, but they won't be traumatized. And there's other that probably won't be able to go back to work. He says it feels more widely accepted to take time off now for mental health. That's something echoed by the recently established union representing RCMP officers. The president encourages anyone, first responder or not, to get help if needed. Take the time you need to recover if you need to take time off work and we'll get the job done with what we have left. Do not sacrifice your uh, physical or mental well-being because you want to um, support your colleagues at work with the workload. And Wounded Warriors Canada has created a first responder fund with money going towards programming and supports for mental health services for those on the front lines. We need to be prepared just as we try to equip them to the best that we can to do their jobs in the field. 
we know now more than ever as a nation that we got to be able to respond in a timely manner uh, to protect their psychological health. And while grieving is clearly different during the COVID-19 pandemic, Terrio says the right perspective is important to help cope. Don't be defined by the tragedies that uh, you've lived through, but define yourself or remember how stronger it made you. And a reminder to seek help if you need it. Callum Smith, Global News, Moncton. One question on everyone's mind is how could someone do this? The shock and disbelief are perhaps magnified by the ongoing pandemic and state of emergency. The search for a motive is on and one avenue RCMP say they will investigate is whether this killing spree had any links to COVID-19 lockdowns. Ashley Field has more. We may never know what caused a man to go on a 12 hour shooting spree, killing 22 innocent people, but that's what investigators are trying to piece together. Too early in the investigation and we simply don't know at this time. The RCMP questioned on whether possibly this could be linked to COVID-19 and the resulting isolation. They say they're not ruling anything out. Again, it's very early and that certainly is an aspect that we will, we will look at, we'll examine. Uh, but we have not yet determined whether there's any link to the COVID-19 crisis. But at least one Canadian criminologist is willing to make that connection. I believe that the lockdown has definitely uh, contributed and I don't believe this shooting would have taken place had there been no lockdown you know, in existence. Daryl Davies has worked in the criminal justice system for 20 years, teaching at Carleton University for 17. He's fully against locking down the country due to COVID-19, saying it's a springboard for violence. The situation in Nova Scotia uh, is horrible and it happened and um, I'm confident that in the end we'll find that there was a link, direct link, uh, to this uh, lockdown. Clinical psychologist Dr. Simon Sherry says it's more complicated than that, but says the COVID-19 lockdown likely didn't help. Being isolated from other people has a range of negative consequences, including depression, and anxiety. Before a mass shooting, Dr. Sherry says there tends to be a crisis situation for the perpetrator, either financial or a breakup, for example. And I would think from that perspective that the stress and strain and the hardship associated with COVID-19 could have played a role, albeit a small role, in the emergence of this mass shooting. And whether it played a role or not could be a question that may never be answered. Ashley Field, Global News, Halifax.